Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're gonna to talk about the FIO FT1 Dynamic Headphones. Really interesting product. So sit back, relax, and we'll talk about these wonderful headphones. Old Guy Hi-Fi, the melody sweet. Modern set, make your life complete. From vintage vibes to the new elite. Old Guy Hi-Fi can't be beat. So the FIO FT1 is a fairly conventional, traditional, closed back dynamic driver headphone. Very well constructed, beautiful American walnut ear cups, and I'll insert pictures of all of this stuff. Lovely metal um, structure for it, great articulation. I had no trouble getting this comfortable, um, and I found it very, very easy to wear for long periods of time. It was very pleasurable. And hopefully you'll find this video pleasurable and you consider giving me a like and a subscribe. So the it's lightweight, 340 grams, not heavy at all. Again, really, really comfortable, beautiful suede ear pads um, and just lovely. Now, it is a dynamic driver uh, headphone. So it uses a 60 millimeter, what they call nano wood technology. It's basically a paper pulp driver. It has a 25 millimeter copper clad aluminum voice coil. So uh, that's a large, rather large, robust driver for a headphone. Most headphone uh, drivers are made out of polypropylene or some material like that. So a good paper pulp, so it has that paper pulp characteristic to it. It also is very easy to drive at 32 ohms and 98 dB. I had no trouble driving it off of any of the headphone amps I used, and we'll talk about what I did use in a minute. Um, it is it does have a frequency response of 10 hertz to 40,000 hertz. But one of the things I found really interesting, in, and here's the thing, with a closed back headphone, the cup, the area behind the driver is a fixed amount of air. And then when you put it on your head, there's a fixed amount of air between your ear and the actual driver itself. So if there are any standing waves in there, there's nowhere for that energy to dissipate quickly. A regular speaker in a regular room, regular speaker, obviously the sound bounce around and all of the energy of those standing waves can be dissipated much more quickly than they can in a sealed area just around your ear. So FIO came up with this really uh, cool design. They call it their innovative parallel ear canal design. And basically what it is, it's a waveguide and an acoustic lens over the driver between your ear and the driver that breaks up those standing waves. I detected no issues with that. Now, I'm not, um, with headphones, when it comes to imaging, most of it occurs in, in the center of my head. So I don't really have a great uh, uh, or a lot of experience with headphone imaging. Um, although, I, you know, with my Sennheiser Mastrop 6XX, obviously it's an open back, so it's a very open sound. This is a little different. It's a little more dynamic for sure. So that, I didn't sense anything, any issues with standing waves. I'll just put it at that. Um, it is, uh, I think, a really, really well-designed headphone. I think it's super comfortable to use. So how did I test? Oh, by the way, it does come with a silver-clad copper, oxygen-free copper cable with 3.5 millimeter connectors at the ear cups and a 4.4 millimeter balance connector and a 6.3 quarter inch headphone adapter for use in a lot of different things. So how did I test it? Well, the first setup I used was the uh, Sparkos Gemini headphone amplifier. Now it has a tube buffer in it. It's a beautiful sounding unit. This, and I'll kind of give you a hint, this has a warm tone to it to begin with. So with the tube buffer running the 12BH7 tube, it was maybe a little too much of a good thing. I was feeding it with a Gishelli J2S 4499 and running off of either a Wii Mini or Artivana on my computer. And that might have been a little too much of a good thing. It was really good, very dynamic. But I think, with, again, with the tube buffer, it was a little too much warmth. So then what I did was I grabbed the FIO K11 RR. Now, keep that in mind because there's another K11 that's a chip base. This is a K11 RR ladder deck balanced headphone amp DAC. And this sounded really good with these headphones. It's a remarkable little piece. You know, I bought, I did a review on this. You know, I, I bought this with the idea I was gonna return it and I liked it so much I decided to keep it. But anyway, so I used this, it was very good. And then the star of the show was this one here. And this is the FIO K9 AKM balanced headphone amp slash preamp slash DAC. It is a remarkable piece. I'm gonna do a full review on it. I've had it in the big system, running off big expensive amplifiers. It does a great job. And as a headphone amp, it is remarkable. So what did I think of the sound of these? Well, 
again, it's a very full range. It, it tends to be a little bit warm, which of course is right in my wheelhouse. I love that. I think that paper pulp driver gives it a depth and a texture and a, and a smoothness to it that a lot of the kind of plastic drivers don't. Um, I found the base to be really good, very good, deep, nuanced, good texture. I didn't get a sense of running out of base. Um, I use this recording from the Rippingtons and it's kind of smooth jazz, um, a very, very well recorded, very good, well recorded studio album, you know, uh, excellent miking on all of the instruments, great bass, great drums. So the bass, the electric bass was very well reproduced. Um, everything was excellent through the mid bass. Now, um, uh, the Rippingtons is, is Russ Freeman is kind of the leader of the band and he's a guitar. So his guitar is excellent electric guitar or acoustic guitar. Just wonderful. There's horns and everything. So it's a really good uh, excellent studio recording with great full range sound. And I found the bass to be just, as I said, deep textured nuance, so forth. Now to kind of figure out the mid range, I'd put in this record, or excuse me, this recording from Nick Drake. And Nick Drake was a British folk mus musician in the early seventies. Very interesting voice, very textured. It's almost sounds like he's not letting his whole voice come out. It's not a very projected voice. It's kind of a pulled back voice. His guitar work is excellent. And the recording, the mid range was just glorious on this headphones. Really good. Again, warmish, not warm, warm, but warmish with the Fio, with the K, uh, the K9 AKM, just beautifully detailed and smooth and articulate. And his voice was so interesting to listen to. And again, it's a very distinctive sound. His guitar work is excellent. The recording is kind of close, very intimate. Um, wonderful, not a lot of bass, not a lot of highs. Um, I think it's just him and a bass and someone with a bongo or something. But boy, was that really interesting and rewarding to listen to. The mid-range was just absolutely glorious without question. To get a little better sense of the high frequencies, I played this recording from Tangerine Dream. It's kind of a best of album. And again, now we've got synthesizers and we've got all kinds of things going on and lots of energy in the mid-range and upper mid-range. And again, that smooth, detailed character continued all the way up. Now, I did put in a, some classical music to kind of get a better sense and some other stuff. And I did listen to um, So What off a of Kind of Blue. And the cymbals, you know, that the, the cymbal in the beginning of that sounded absolutely natural. So in the high frequencies, it was very smooth and detailed to a point. Way up high in the absolute last measure of air or room sense, I think was softened but I didn't mind at all. It was just so engaging and so easy to listen to for long periods of time. I just found myself really, really enjoying the sound of the headphones and getting lost in the music and kind of digging deeper into other recordings or this artist and whatever. So very, very enjoyable. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you'd be willing to give me a like and your subscription. And if you wish to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the window. And also in the pinned in the pinned comment and in the video description are a link to join the channel if you wish to do so. In the video description are affiliate links to Amazon. There will be a, a link to this. And I think this headphone at $149 is an absolute steal um, for its performance. It's amazing. And if you wish to buy one, I would encourage you to use the link in my description. There are a list of all the equipment and obviously other Amazon affiliate links. There are my playlists in there. There will be links to the three albums I, dis I talked about here in this review. Please comment. Please let me know your thoughts. Do you guys enjoy headphone listening? What's your favorite kind of headphone? Are you looking to get into headphones? Um, those kinds of things. I really appreciate the comments. Let's please keep them friendly, nice, and professional. If you wish, you can follow me on Instagram. I think I've covered everything I need to say. I really enjoyed my time with the FIO FT1s. It was really rewarding. And the combination of the K9 AKM and these FT1s really was enlightening and eye-opening for me. Again, I'm not the biggest headphone guy in the world, but man, this is turning me into a converter or converting me into a headphone enthusiast. Very, very rewarding. So now my name is Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. It's your job to go put on a really good pair of headphones and listen to the music you love. Thank you guys so very much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Beep, beep.